This is the Open University. Hello, welcome back to the uh, delightfully superficial university which we call the or an open university. And it's been a while. I haven't talked to you for a while. And I wanted to do something a little bit different today instead of just lecturing, you know, about some concept. Uh, I thought I would do take you on a day, uh, a day in my life here in Athens. I've been here six months. It's amazing. I came not really knowing how long I was going to stay. Uh, first of all, I was staying up at the sale. And then I moved down to this place, which is Metaxorgeo. <laughs> which is kind of a, a, a dodgy area. Um, people tend to step on, step on syringes and things on the ground and uh, have to end up in hospital, but luckily not us. Um, and Noemi has been here uh, maybe two or three months, and I've been here for a full six months. And I recorded my album Athenian here, not in this flat, but in the previous flat. Uh, I've also been a, a busy beaver working on art texts, so I, I've done one uh, about... A French artist called Anne Bourse, which is going to appear on the website of the Fondation Ricard in Paris. And I did another one, which is uh, a uh, series of fictions based on the uh, artworks of Joachim Brandau, who's a, a German artist who made, um, and he's still alive, he makes uh, uh, resin fiberglass sculptures, anthropomorphic, uh, uh, based on shop window mannequins. Uh, and it's sort of half technology and half the human figure, so they're a little bit post-human in a way. So I've set some of these uh, sculptures, which are currently showing in an exhibition in Basel, in kind of fictional landscapes like the Heidi, for instance. We sit here watching Heidi in the evenings, the um, Alps no Shoujo, uh, the Japanese version of Heidi. Anyway, um, this is... Uh, it, uh, you, you see us on a fairly typical day, to be honest. We go often, pretty much on a daily basis, to these Lycus Agoras. Uh, Lycusagoras.gr is a website which tells you in Athens, or actually all over Greece, where these farmers' markets are happening. And they tend to have a little addendum with fish, uh, souvlaki, and clothes, and also sort of plastic, cheap plastic items and things like that. So they've been invaluable during the lockdown. We're just now emerging from lockdown. We're seeing the city come back to life. Uh, it's actually full of Germans uh, this week because Germans have been released from their home country, which is also my home country at the moment. I have an apartment in Berlin. Um, but we'll see uh, a typical day in the life of Noemi and Nick uh, in Athens. We go first uh, in quest for uh, un petit café de qualité, a little bit of good coffee, which we find at a place called Me Then in uh, Kokaki. Anyway, I don't need to narrate it. You can watch it unfold in real time. Hello, um, you find me in Metaxor Gale. Um, vlogging in Murtax or Geo, Athens, and I'm uh, heading out with um, the delightful Noemi, who's on camera here, um, to have a café de qualité. We always start the day with a, a good cup of coffee, and I think we'll take the red line from our local station, Murtax or Geo, to um, Kukaki, which is the site of <laughs> some of the best coffee. Uh, there's a place called Me Then, which um, we can have a coffee at before heading off to <laughs> before heading off to um, one of the daily markets which are called uh, Lycus Agoras and we like to go to the Lycus Agoras Interesting insect motifs in this station and uh, it's sort of rather the Jean Cocteau influenced the symbol of the sun So from one uh, area of Desu to, to another, but this is a rather more fashionable area. This is Kukaki, and uh, we've come from the Taksurgeo, so uh, it's a beautifully um, clear day. Uh, yesterday there was a big fire in um, uh, an area just to about 50 kilometers to the west of Athens. So the air quality was terrible. It was uh, 160 or something on the... Uh, the uh, air app that we use. This is a place called uh, Kinono, which is uh, a rather attractive terrace. Here's the boss at the end here with his dreadlocks and his 
He said, uh, yeah, no, he tells me it was 188, which was, uh, it's kind of stay indoors, um, uh, unhealthy for people with breathing issues, and uh, unhealthy for anyone, actually. So this area, because it's close to the Contemporary Art Museum, which we saw the other day for the first time uh, in six months. I mean, I, we hadn't seen it before, but it's it opened for the first time in six months. So uh, that's over that way, just behind that office building. There's a lot of vacant property. There's a lot of work going on here. But also some little galleries, like I think there's one called Concept of Space or something around here, where they were supposed to have a Kader Atia show. But um, when we turned up to see it, uh, it hadn't been installed. So it's all a bit iffy and, and uh, you know, appointments only based at the moment. But things are coming back to life, definitely. Yeah, this place is actually called State of Concept, and it's uh, closed. <laughs> I don't know if they have any any cut out of your end here. So we're on a street here called Odysseus Androtsu in... Uh, Kukaki. and uh, this is called me then and it's actually a fashion showroom but they do coffee and have what they call a morning bar but it's all day and they do very good coffee and uh, we're gonna get some so now we're seated waiting for two uh, ice lattes to be prepared I, I can catch you up on a couple of other activities it's been quite a while since I've made one of these and uh, I'm sort of this is a sort of in tribute to Carrie Cakes who's one of my favorite vloggers who lives in Seoul and just talks about how she goes to cafes and things like that and uh, since everybody's been in lockdown for six months including Athens here um, I just thought it'd be nice to be out and about for a change rather than just pacing inside a flat because we do ne uh, knowing me my girlfriend is here from <laughs> from Paris uh, has been for over a month so uh, we tend to just live and have fun and not really you know reflect too much or make videos or whatever but it is it is nice I was just reading in the Financial Times this morning about um, the distinction between uh, travelers and tourists which has been one of these class distinctions like the one between expats and immigrants <laughs> so I've always been uh, careful not to say I'm an expat or to, to vary it with saying I'm a, an economic migrant um, but also um, that I'm a, not just a tourist but also a traveler so uh, one of the things this FT article was saying this morning was about how maybe one uh, outcome of the uh, pandemic has been or will be people will take longer trips instead of just you know jetting off somewhere and doing all the bureaucracy required ridiculous bureaucracy now you have to fill out uh, there are all sorts of things to, to go to France from Britain now. You have to have a, some kind of documentation uh, presented to the city hall one month in advance. Absolutely crazy stuff that didn't apply before 1992 at all. But um, it's, it's a sort of tit for tat, almost a war between Britain and France just now, or England and France, should I say. But uh, yeah, I, I think this deciding to be locked down in Athens has been a fantastic decision for me and... Uh, um, uh, for, for us both, for me and Naomi. And uh, so we've really got to know the city well in six months. And uh, one of the things we love doing is going to the Lycus Agoras, which is the daily markets. Another thing, uh, sometimes they have clothes. So the one we're going to today, it's in um, uh, an area just behind the arena, and it has clothes. Uh, it's called Pangrati, the area it's in. Um, yeah, Metz is the area just close to it as well. And uh, so, yeah, you're going to witness us uh, rummaging on uh, trestle tables. That's one of the great joys of life is to rummage. And um, let's see what we find. What is even the point of a cup of coffee if one doesn't vlog it, as Plato used to say? Uh, so there are many different areas of Athens and they all have kind of a, uh, there's a standard market they all have, but they all have different stocks and different stalls at the markets and um, <clears throat> the one we're going to today has some amazing East German dresses uh, which um, we bought already. Naomi is wearing uh, like four or five of them and they're nylon dresses from the 70s. Apparently East Germany used to overproduce uh, for the communist countries of the south, uh, Albania and places like that. So I think a lot of this stock that we see which might be new, sort of dead stock type stuff, uh, but it's it's really 70s patterns and or 60s even nylon synthetics. And uh, it's it's I researched a bit online. It was made in Berlin or in little towns in uh, you know south of um, 
Dessau and places like that and exported. They exported 90% of what they made to the Balkans and to other countries in exchange for hard currency. Look, here's a magazine, Holiday, Spring Summer 2019. Holiday in New Zealand. It looks, like a, looks so it looks very vintage, yeah, it's like a relic of a past age. It's one of the downsides of Athens is motorcyclists who just skid around. Someone just skidded past us on the pavement. This on the other hand is what we love and approve of, is the uh, Athenian trams. We love trams. Athens uh, could be a living paradise if it weren't for uh, carbon traffic. So here we are waiting for the tramway. And I have to know that in Athens the tram was created in 126 before the birth of the Christ. But it was not called a tramway. It was called Anoto Tram. And it was made of stone. And here's what the trams used to look like in Athens. Uh, this is now used as a toilet when, when the door is open. I don't think it is. And this is another of the downsides of Athens is the street art, which occasionally will be very good. Like there's a, an artist called Simone Fontana from Thessalonica who's very good, but um, mostly it's rubbish like this. And of course, Berlin is the new Athens. So this little part of Neos Cosmos neighborhood, it's called Durguti, and it's famous for these Soviet-style apartment blocks and also the fact that many immigrants are housed here. But we're getting on the tram. So here we are in a neighborhood called Metz and it's a subdivision of Pangrati. Oops, looks like they're filming the film. <laughs> and this is a place we come because uh, there's some, there's a nice cafe here called Odeon. Right here. And there's also a little bookshop. How do you pronounce this bookshop? It's called Vita KM, right? Vita Katoni. People are saying on the Google reviews that this is too arty, this name, but this cafe, it's got, uh, it's got music uh, late at night, apparently, although that's forbidden right now. Actually, it's kind of a blessing. I love the fact that music is forbidden in cafes at the moment. So I was asked to film this and say, oh, he has such a nice bum in this trousers. Actually, it looks more like a... Like uh, this park, it's the one on the back of the stadium, and we've still never found the, the entrance. Here's a view of Athens looking to the west. Actually, this is out towards uh, where the fire was yesterday. It's a huge fire, but you can see why the city is quite similar to for me, it's like Kyoto or Osaka a little bit. I don't know what it's like for Noemi. <laughs> <laughs> and the other side looking eastwards, that's the legendary Himetos. Now you can begin to hear the street cries, the hawkers in this market. Oh, here's a cat. <laughs> Noemi's very good at communicating with cats. We just said uh, the watched kettle never boils and probably we won't find anything good today. We're always we find these amazing old dresses here for two euros each. And um, let's see if we're lucky today. Is that one of these German ones? I remember that from last week, actually. Mm. Oh, 
Look at the color in this one, it's totally deconstructed. Interesting kind of art deco shapes on it. <laughs> oh yeah, we found this one before. This is uh, stained, unfortunately, but it's got an amazing pattern on it. See, I'm gradually, because I lived here in 1970, I'm transforming our look into a 1970 look. And this is perfect, because this is what little girls would have worn at birthday parties in 1970 when I lived here. This is polyester, it might be one of the East German ones, I don't know. Uh, the label says Trevira. 2000 is it? 2000, right. But it might have been a futuristic name. This is uh, quite interesting. This looks like a very sort of 1975-ish. Nichimen. It sounds like a Japanese label, I don't know. This one I've seen before at these markets. Does it have a label? It's uh, oh, this is a Magdeburg. Yeah, this is one of these German ones. This also looks like 70s East German polyester. Uh, doesn't have a label. Not that attractive, but we tend to like uh, white and pink. Mm -hmm. And we also like these blue. You have so how many blue dresses do you have like this? I think I have seven. <laughs> yeah, I like the sort of Star Trek uh, color shape, and it does seem to be. Uh, one of the East German polyester footer. Yeah, it says footer, food. 21 footer, 100% Poly polyamide. That would suit you. <laughs> Two euros, you can't really go wrong, can you? No. Except in having excess luggage at the airport. First German, this is made in Europe and German, uh, it looks 70s, and so does this. These are all probably exported from uh, East Germany to Albania, Greece and other Balkan destinations for hard currency. That's not bad, I quite like this one. Strange for this thing, but... Yeah. I'm sure it can come up, maybe. I think this is more yeah, I, I like this one, but it looks like it's one of these sort of fast fashion uh, kind of retro designs. This is the thing about real retro and fake retro, it's all mixed together on this trestle. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good, I like that. Let's get that one, two euros. Why not? So bold. What does it say on the label? 30 degrees. <laughs> 30 polyesters. Yeah, that looks yeah, like a... Yeah, one is the size of the German one. Yeah, it's one of the German ones. These were made in communist factories. I just found my bag, which I wear every day, was made by prisoners in, uh, in Catalonia. And there were protests against their conditions while they were being made. So I feel guilty about this now. Someone bought the dress and left the belt. Every time we come here, we hit gold and it's two euros. So my dad was a keen fisherman. And I think this is the closest I come to fishing is that I dig deep, I delve deep into the river of uh, polyester and I find some amazing silver fish. This is a blouse. You think it's an East German blouse? Korea. I would wear it. So we've got one East German nylon uh, polyester dress and one uh, Korean, probably more modern that one, right? Yeah. But it has very nice 
nice sleeves. Nice sleeves. Is that elasticated really? on the sleeves? Yeah. Oh. It's very cute and vibrant. <laughs> so two euros each. Yeah, there seems to be a wealth of things here which you probably wouldn't find in larger cities like Berlin or Paris where people would have... People in the know uh, would be selling these things on Etsy or on Pinterest. Can you sell on Pinterest? I don't know. They'd be selling them or in, in retro shops where things cost 60 euros or whatever. If you look online, these retro 70s dresses cost about 40, at least 40, right? More clothes means more coat hangers. <laughs> so here is not the best example, but uh, in other markets, especially when it's sunny, it's very nice to look at people's cards. Yeah, we like these Athenian yeah. carts, which are transparent, so they're given the color of whatever's in them, including the very bright plastic bag. My Tumblr page has been totally dominated by the, the, the daily markets we go and visit. We, we find out there's a website called lycosagoras.gr, and we find out each day where in Athens there is one of these markets. And, I mean, we're not loading ourselves down with fruit and veg every day, but we do like the clothes. Another thing when I'm taking photos, I always film these blankets, which the people, uh, I don't know where they get these blankets. They seem to be much more interesting than regular blankets. Maybe they're just older, but the market stall holders tend to, uh, to have these amazing blankets. <laughs> this is the kind of curated vintage clothing that we tend to avoid. Open University.